Welcome, welcome, welcome to Overflow Christian Center. We're live, live. Please make sure you share this live with your family and friends. We're so thankful and grateful that you have the opportunity to be with us. We are truly grateful for that. We thank God for you. And we ask you to share, share, share. If it's good for you, it's good for everybody else. Set up a watch party, share. Let everybody know that we are on live. Now, uh, don't forget, Pastor is on a very important subject. It is called End Time Events, Signs of the Times. So we want you to be aware. We want you to be watchful. We want you to listen. We want you to have your notepads, your pens, papers, journals, whatever it is that you write on. Don't do it on a scrap paper because you're going to lose it. <laughs> Put it in some type of a book so that you can go back and refer to it. As well as you can always listen to it again and again. If there's anything or any clarity that you need, you can absolutely listen to it again and again. Amen? All right, so we're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're with us. Thank God for you. And so now let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this day for it truly is the day that you have made and we've made a conscious decision to rejoice and to be glad in it. We thank you, Father, for our heads are not hung down low, but we are enlightened and we are happy and joyful and hilarious. Why? Because we are in the land of the living and we thank you, Father, for all that you have done for us this entire week. You have blessed us. You have kept us. You woke us up. In our right minds, we have the activity of our limbs, our fingers, our feet, our toes, our hands, our eyes, our nose, our mouth, our ears to hear. Our heart beats to the rhythm of life. Our brain functions. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done for us thus far. We are 
fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. Thank you, Lord, for that. Now, God, we ask you to just take control of this service, this online service. We thank you, Father, that you bless and touch and keep and cover every person who's listening under the sound of my voice to this particular stream. We ask God now that you continue to move upon them in a mighty and special way. We thank you for increase on their lives now, God. We ask now, Father, that you touch the man of God, our pastor, Billy Marshall Jr., as he teaches the word of God. We thank you, Lord, that it will be transferred into the ears with uh, uh, very simply, Father, we thank you that he will educate us, and we will be taught the word of God, and that we will be able to apply that word to our lives and be able to minister to others and let them know that Jesus is Lord and he is coming again. So we thank you and we bless you and we glorify you for this day, for truly it is a beautiful day to be in the land of the living. We are forever grateful to you for our lives, and we bless you, we honor you in Jesus' name, and all those in agreement say amen. Amen and amen. I'm going to grab my little handy dandy right now really quickly. All right, there we go. All right, so we have just a few announcements for you. Just a few announcements. Um, the first is we want to say thank you for all those who joined us for intercessory prayer. I believe that I put the uh, intercessory prayer information on social media as well as I sent it out text to a few and definitely to our overflow family. So we want to say thank you so much for joining us. Um, at uh, for prayer that uh, happened this Friday. It truly was an anointed prayer and pastor decreed and declared so much unto the people of God. So thank you again for joining us for intercessory prayer. Like I said, a church that does not pray might as well shut the door. You must, M-U-S-T, must pray. We have a lot of troubling times now. And a lot of things going on. So we must, you need to be praying. You need to be talking to the Lord. Once again, you don't have to do it, you know, consistently for an hour. That may not be your thing because that's not mine. But my thing is I pray all day and I talk to the Lord all day. So you can do that. Amen. There's no set way to pray. Just pray. So once again, we'll be back with you with intercessory prayer in September. The first Friday in September at 8.40 p.m. Or we may be back in the church building. I don't know. So just continue to stay tuned and we'll let you know what we're doing. Amen. All right. Secondly, um, the second uh, uh, part that I'd like to discuss as well is our YouTube page. Please like, share, and subscribe and hit the notification button on our YouTube page. I have uploaded the end time events and signs of the times message onto YouTube. So you can uh, watch that additionally on YouTube on our page, which is Overflow Live. I will send a message once again on social media as well as onto our group text messages just to give you that information so you can send it to your family and friends and let them know that they can listen to the message on YouTube. Now, YouTube has specific guidelines. You need a thousand subscribers, and we would love to have YouTube, be able, we would love to be able to stream this on YouTube as well, as well as Facebook. Because there are some people who do not have Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And so they would love to hear the message even after uh, this. I know I sent it out to someone. They don't have either uh, any of those social media pages. And so I sent them the YouTube page, which you can pull up at any time. So we'd love for you to get on that. Go on our um, YouTube page, listen to the message, and we will premiere all of his messages, especially this end time events, for your listening pleasure and to learn, 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 learn. Amen. All right. I did make a mention last week that I will talk to you about the gala, but we're gonna I'm gonna give it one more week, and so I will get back to you with regards to our Christmas gala next week. Next week you'll hear from us about our Christmas gala and what we are planning to do. Uh, again, because of the times, we're just not sure what's really happening um, as far as gatherings and things like that. Things change just about every day, every week. Things change. So as we are going along, we don't want you to fall short of, you know, doing what you need to do. We'd love for you to join us. So next week, I promise you, I will get back to you on that. All right. I believe that's it for my announcements. I would love to know if there's anyone celebrating a birthday 
today. Today is, here I go, y'all. Mm -hmm. The ninth. The ninth. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss. All right. August 9th. <laughs> August 9th. Is anyone celebrating a birthday today? August the 9th. August the 9th. If that's you, let me know. Let me know you were born in August. August is your birthday. Praise God. I don't see anybody, and I can't think of anybody in particular um, that's celebrating. Oh, you know what? There is one person that I can mention, and that is Miss Vin, Miss Lavinia Gibson. It is her birthday. She's from Crenshaw Christian Center, New York. I love you, Miss Vin. You are so special. And you know, Pastor loves you too. He, <laughs> he saw you one time dancing on the dance floor. He said, look at her dancing. And he just fell in love with Miss Vin from that day forward. So, <laughs> so anyway, Miss Vin, happy birthday. I hope you hear this. I hope you're tuning in. I hope you hope you tune in at any time. I'll send you a message. Let's know I shouted you out. But happy birthday to you today is her birthday. So is there anybody else that I'm missing? Is there anyone else's birthday that I'm missing? Please let me know in the chat. I'm paying attention. I'm watching. And today is, uh, today is your birthday. Okay, so if it's not today, but it'll be today through next Saturday. Today through next Saturday. If that's your birthday, we'd like for you to let us know today through next Saturday. If that's your birthday, we would love to celebrate your birthday with you. Praise God, an August birthday. Born right in the heat of the summertime. Amen. All right, I don't see anybody. I guess you guys will let me know, and if so, we'll try to get back to you. All right, praise God. Is there anyone celebrating an anniversary today? Today's the night. You're celebrating an anniversary today. If that's you, please let us know. We'd like to celebrate your anniversary. Covenant rocks. Amen. He that finds a wife finds a good thing. There's a good thing going on in your house. Amen. All right. Now, what if you were celebrating an uh, anniversary from today through next week? Today through next week. If that's you, please let us know. Give us an opportunity to celebrate with you. I don't see anybody. That's okay. All right. Well, we do absolutely wonderful weddings here at Overflow Christian Center. We have one coming up this week, so we're excited about that. So, and I know I believe Trayon is listening. So Trayon and Sierra, we are excited. They're gonna be our August bride and groom, and we're thankful and we're grateful. Pastor will be there to minister to you. So this is exciting. So next, this time next year, we get to celebrate your anniversary, one year anniversary, amen? All right, so. Get ready. We've got a wedding. Amen, amen, amen. We've got a wedding. All right. So I believe that's it for my announcements. Uh, Pastor G, do you want to take care or do you want me to go for it? All right. He said go for it. All right. So hello, everyone, again. And we would like to now give you an opportunity to bless the Lord with your tithe and offering. Yes, we are cheerful givers at Overflow Christian Center. Amen. We bring our tithe into the storehouse so that there would be room enough, okay? And so we bring them. We bring them to the storehouse. Amen. He said, prove me. Prove me. The only place in the Bible where the Lord says to prove him. Did you prove him? Can you prove him? Yes, you can, because I know I have, and he is no respecter of person. And I thank God that I'm able to give, give a tithe, and give an offering unto the Lord, because he gives the increase, and we thank God for increasing each and every one of your lives. Now, when you give into Overflow Christian Center, you're not giving into some place where they're going to take your money, go on vacation, <laughs> you know, uh, go on cruises and stuff like that. No, 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 no. We're doing the work. We are doing the work here. It is good ground here at Overflow Christian Center. Excellent ground. I wouldn't say that. I would be very, I would be the one to be very clear and for like, mm -mm. you know, because I just like my friend Leticia and I, her her words is I. She said I can hear my pocketbook closing. <laughs> And she knows the ground is not good. She says it. I can hear my pocketbook closing. So that's the same. But we give here because we know it's going into good ground. And we're going to continue to do the work of the Lord. 
and we continue to ask you to partner with us as we do this work. Um, we have not failed to be a blessing to the people of God. Just because it's COVID time and just because we're in a pandemic doesn't mean that ministry stops. Ministry does not stop. We keep going. Amen? So with that said, we thank you in advance for all of the money that you give to us so that we will continue to sow into good ground. So if you are making checks, please make them payable to Overflow Christian Center Inc. <clears throat> I-N-C. Inc. Now, also, if you are giving by, and let me make sure I have everything situated here, all right? If you're giving by Cash App, you can go to Overflow CC, Overflow CC, if you want to give via Cash App. If you'd like to give by Zelle, you can go to Overflow Christian Center at gmail.com overflow christian center at gmail.com and finally if you would like you can just simply go to our website and our website is www.overflowchristiancenter.org hit the donate button and please make sure you mark your seed be very clear where you want your seed to go if it's tithe offering or both we would love for you to give amen all right, so if I may, we'll just con uh, we're just going to sing our awesome song and bless the Lord as you are giving your time and offering. Come on and help me sing this song. Give, it will be given to you, pressed down and shaken together. Believe and know the word is true. With your faith, God will be pleased. Just know that. When you plant your seed, it will spring up on every hill. So get ready, get ready, release your faith, and with gladness prepare to give. Here we go, y'all. Casting your bread on the water. Casting your bread on the water. And in many days, on every wave, it will over. overtake you. It will flood your life with blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Try him today. Amen? Amen. Try him. Prove him today. Prove him. I promise you, he will make sure that his word comes to pass in your life. Amen. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for these gifts that you have given unto us. We thank you, Father, for this good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto their bosom. Thank you, Father, for increase and promotion, wealth and riches that lay in their lives now. Give them even the more, Lord, as they give. We thank you that you give it back to them, Father. We thank you for 100-fold return on their giving. Thank you, Father, for every gift that they have sown. We know, Father, that you see each seed that's planted and the harvest is ripe. We thank you, Lord, that they cast their bread on many waters and in not many days it will return unto them like a tsunami, a blessing that they will not have room enough to receive it. For now, God, we need the people of God to have increase in their lives because you are coming back and there is a work to do right here on the earth. So thank you, Father. We bless you, we glorify you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Well, I'm excited today. I'm excited because Pastor is getting ready to come on up here after this song. He is so wrong. Y'all pray for Pastor. I see you got come up. He says, mm -mm, mm -mm. like, oh, you gonna sing first. You know what? Y'all pray, okay? Y'all pray. Y'all just pray for me. Pray my strength in the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all want a pastor, don't you? Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> He's so wrong. Y'all have no idea what I got to look at. What I'm in this room. We got to love it. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, you just kept, you just be ready to get up here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he's the worst. Yeah, yeah, I wish I could turn the camera and let you see what he's doing. I really wish I could do no, it. But some of y'all know. Some of y'all know because you, you you come to overflow and you understand what I got to go through. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Lori. Praying for you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody who understands my pain. Hallelujah. Richie said, you know me. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, Richie. Let's go to the Lord and worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Rob.
high and lifted up, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's continue to worship the Lord. Our God is holy. He's high and lifted up. Come on, let's continue to worship the Lord, our God. He is holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, my soul shall rise to thee. Oh, holy, 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Testing on two. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's holy, holy, holy. He's worthy of all praise, honor, adoration, thanksgiving. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We honor you, God. What a Savior we have. Bless the name of the Lord. He is a good God. God is a good God. Oh, good God for the Lord. <laughs> oh, God is a good God. Hallelujah. All right. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, I just, you know, sometimes I get caught up into to thinking about the Lord and worshiping Him. So, um, Amen. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so let's get to get right into the prayer. Dear Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for you, blessing you, honoring you, and giving you all glory. We thank you for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. My Father, I'm asking you to hide me behind Him. Let Him be seen and heard and demonstrated in this place. Father, we rely upon your great Holy Spirit, for the Lord Jesus told us that he is the great comforter, and that he will lead us and guide us into all truth. And because this is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, we thank you for him, and we honor him, and we welcome him into this place. And we rely upon him, for he is our teacher. Think through my mind, Holy Spirit, and speak through my, and speak through my lips of play, so that your people can be blessed. They don't need to hear a word from me, but they need to hear a word from you because it is your word that brings life. It is your word, dear Father God, that when it's spoken in faith, change happens. And Father, I honor you and I bless you and I give you glory for your word. Now, my Lord, I thank you also for the, the powers of heaven being loosed on our behalf. We loose them today to bring about the will of the Father. So every person that is listening to me, every person that will listen to this to this message, Father, I ask for, for the angels to encamp around them to bring about the life-giving change that the Word has promised to bring. And Father, I thank you that the enemy cannot steal, stop, prevent, or hinder not one person from receiving the goodness of the Lord. The anointing and revelation knowledge is loosed in this place. In Jesus' holy and righteous name, and Satan, we remind you that these premises are off limits. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I've been dealing with the signs of the times and the end of times or the end of the age. And and, um, and, and, and I'm so grateful that uh, our First Lady is uploading the messages onto uh, YouTube um, so that I don't have to keep going over... Uh, the 
so much review. I will always go over review, but not as much because you can always go and get it off of YouTube. And, and guess what? It's free. <laughs> and so you can, you can go and get it off of YouTube. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so um, we are grateful for that. Uh, if you would uh, turn with me to 2 Timothy, we'll do our financial foundation of scriptures first, and then we'll get into some prayer. A revelation. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. Uh, it says it so used this fleet also uh, youthful lust. He says but pursue righteousness faith, love, peace and uh, with those who uh, who call on the name of uh, on the Lord out of a pure heart but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes. This is very important. I want you he's about to talk about the end time but he's telling him he's referencing this first don't get into foolish debates, <laughs> uh, knowing that they generate strife. As a servant of the Lord, we must not be quarrelsome, but gentle to all, able to teach patient in humility, uh, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may, not, they may come to their senses and escape the snares of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, in chapter 3, we will continue on with that on 2 Timothy. But in chapter 3, it says this. He says, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, uh, lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, un unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. Bless the name of the Lord. For this, for of this sort are those who creep into the household and make captivity of double women. No, we're not going to go through that part. Uh, jump down to chapter 4 with me. He says this. Uh... He says this, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. This is vital. This is most important. This is the reason why I'm doing the whole end time events and end time message. Is it not because of any other thing that I want to show you that I know about end times or uh, I didn't ran out of other things to preach or anything. I want to show you, to give you information, to give you information about the end times. I want to show you, to give you information about the end times. And, now I'm just giving you information about the end times, so that you will get on your job. Uh, you will get on your job. You'll know that Jesus is coming. And you don't want your loved ones, your family, your friends or even your enemies to go to a place called a burning hell. Amen. So we need to get on our job. So we need to preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Right. Convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears and they will keep them for themselves, teachers, and they will turn to their, their ears away from the truth. Uh, they'll turn their ears away from the truth and they'll go after their own truth. You heard it yourself. You heard people all, all over the, all over this nation and over the world as well uh, saying, I'm just living my truth. Well, if your truth is not lining up with the truth, abandon your truth and get the truth. Amen. Amen. And it says, and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in, in all things. Mm -hmm. Endure affliction. That's very important. Endure, affliction. endure uh, 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 people talking about you, misunderstanding you. Endure it. Don't pay any attention to it. Keep going. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Oh, my God. Most important. Do the work of an evangelist. You have to evangelize. You're not an evangelist. I didn't say you were an evangelist. Only person that can call you an evangelist is God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Oh, this is so quite important. For those of you that have projects that you're still working on, please fulfill it. Get it out there. 
Time is short. Time is short. Get it out. Okay, so, all right. <sighs> all right. So I, I can't go back over this, all, all this other stuff about uh, uh, declaring it in from the beginning. He told that in Isaiah uh, 46. He, 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 he let them know that. In Genesis 6 and 3, he told them that your, my spirit, when he told Noah, my spirit will now always strive with man. Uh, he said, my spirit will now always strive with man, but his day shall be 120 years. Uh, we told you that that could not mean uh, years of life. He couldn't have been talking about uh, age because we told you that Noah was 950 years when he died. Now, he spoke to Noah. After the flood, Noah lived another 350 years. So he couldn't have been talking about age because then Noah was disqualified from that. Noah, Noah, God showed favoritism to Noah. Uh, uh, our Abraham, Abraham was 175 years old when he died. 175 years 175 years. Could you imagine? Uh, but God said, my, my, my spirit will not all strong with men, but that day shall be 120 years. So he couldn't have been talking about age. No, Abraham lived 175 years. Isaac lived 180 years. Jacob lived 147 years. Aaron lived 123 years. So he couldn't have been talking about age. And then over there in Psalms 91, you hear him say, uh, basically, live until you're satisfied. I'll satisfy you with long life. You know, so you can keep living until you're satisfied. Amen? Amen. Uh, so so we, we, we're going to go through that. We'll go through the whole Sabbath uh, day, the seventh, the seventh Sabbath year, and the 50th Jubilee. We'll try to get through that in, in, in just a minute. I do want to remind you of Daniel 9. We, we're not going to go over it right now, but Daniel 9, keep that in your uh, proximity, in your notes. Make sure you read it. Daniel 9, verse 20, starting at verse 20. Um, we, last time, I think we left off, we was talking to you uh, uh, about... Um, we was talking to you about, uh, you know, how I, I, may, I may have to deal with nine, Daniel 9 now. All right, Daniel 9, verse 20. Uh, Daniel 9, verse 20. He says, now I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sins and the sins of, of, of my people, and presented my supplications before the Lord, my God, for the Holy Spirit. Now, I, I am rushing through this part because I know some people say, slow down, Pastor. I don't want you to see. I, this, this is just all review. So I'm reading this kind of fast so I can get to my points. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So he says, he says, uh, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have come forth to give you skills to understand. At the beginning of your supplication, the command went out, good God for glory, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are determined. Now listen, this is seven weeks ago. He says this for your people and for for your holy city to finish their transgression, number one, to make end of sins, number two, to make a reconciliation uh, for iniquity, number three, to bring everlasting righteousness, number four, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Okay. So these are all the things that's gonna happen in these 70 weeks, okay? Uh um of years. He says, know, know therefore and understand that from the, the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem. So, going forth for, to build Jerusalem, this time frame starts. He said, there shall be seven weeks or 62 weeks. Uh, the streets shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome times. He says, after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. So he's talking about Jesus. Jesus is going to come. He's going to be cut off. But not for his sake. Not for himself. You know, this is, this is talking about Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, the, and his anointing, the Christo, the, you know, Christ. 
He's going to come, but he's going to be cut off. So from the time they announce they're going to build a temple up until the time that Jesus Christ comes, it's going to be 483 years. So I'm just going to simplify it because we went through all of this before. So it's going to be 483 years. He said, and then it's going to be cut off. Jesus is going to be cut off. He was killed. He was, killed. He was crucified. All right. And then he says this. He says, uh, he will be cut off. And the, uh, and not for himself. He says, and the people of the prince who is to come. Now the people of the prince who is to come. Who is the prince who is to come? And that's Satan. He's the prophet of the prince of the air. All right. Uh, he says, he says, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Uh, the end of it shall be with a flood until the end of the war desolation determined then he shall confirm a covenant with man for with with many for one week but in the middle of the week talking about the middle of the week that last week there's seven weeks left or seven years left all right uh, he's going to confirm a covenant and we'll get into this when we talk about the end all right we're not talking about the end. We just we are only really dealing with just the signs of the times right now. We didn't even got to the end yet, but this is just a little preview of the end. All right. Uh, he said that in the middle of the week he shall he shall um, he shall break covenant, uh, uh, but in the middle of the week you know he'll break covenant. He says that he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offerings. And on the wings of an abomination shall shall be the one who makes it desolate. All right, all right. So I told you that when I read all that, just to say that with with 483 years, God turns His clock off with Israel to deal with their transgression, to deal with their sin, to deal with their problems. He he turned the clock off and he turned. And I told you last week he had to turn. He turned to something. He turned from them and dealt with somebody else. Who did he deal with? He dealt with the church for two days. And I showed you in scripture. I don't know how many of you remember that. I he showed I showed you in scripture. Uh, uh, you know him dealing with uh, with Israel. I mean with with the church. I told you in scripture him dealing with the church. All right. Uh, and I told you that the church age is 2,000 years. Remember in Luke, Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 30, and the Good Samaritan. Remember the Good Samaritan? And, and he went down to Jericho from, uh, let's go to it. Let's, uh, yeah. Jericho, all right, uh, verse 30, verse 30. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 30. And he said to him, uh, you, you, you have... Answer rightly. He's talking about the young man who, who he's talking to. Uh, do this and you will live. He said, but uh, he wanted to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus answered and then he began to tell him this peril. I'm just going to paraphrase it so that you'll know. Uh, and I'm going to put it into the context that you'll see what I'm saying. Okay, J Jesus told him, all right, I'm going to give you a paraphrase. You want to know who your neighbor is? This is your neighbor. He said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem. Now, Jerusalem is always uh, a type of heaven, and Jericho is always a type of the world or city. All right. Uh, he said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem uh, to Jericho, and he fell among thieves. This is a perfect picture of what happened in the garden. God took Adam and Eve and placed them in the garden. From He said, let us make man. Let us make man, let us make man uh, after our likeness. And, and God clothed them with his glory. Look what happened to them. He says, and a certain man went down from Jerusalem, uh, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who, who, who stripped him of his clothing. He stripped him of his glory, wounded him and, and departed and leaving him half dead. That's exactly what Satan did to Adam. He stripped him of the glory, mm -hmm. he wounded him, and he left him half dead, cut off from God. God said, the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall, you shall surely die. Well, he didn't die physically, but he died spiritually. He's half dead now. Yes. He's half dead. It's a, a perfect picture of what happened in the garden. Jesus is telling this, this to them. He says, he says, he's living him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest... Now these priests and uh, came down the road, and and when they saw him, he passed by on the other side. Well, with all the priests and the prophets, they they could do nothing to help. 
No, no matter how good or no matter how noble, no matter what they, they couldn't do anything to help. All right. He says, uh, 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 he said, and when he, okay, he says, and when he saw him pass, he passed on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place and came and looked and passed on and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, in the, in the traditional Bible, it's called the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. Listen to where he was. This is, this is the man now. The Good Samaritan is on a journey. He came to where the man was. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He came to where we were. Uh, he came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. So he went and he and he went to him and bandaged his wounds. That's ain't nothing but the atonement. The atonement don't cleanse your sins, it just covers them. Mm -hmm. The band he just bandaged his wound to keep him from bleeding so that God can have fellowship with him. And then what happens? Then later he pours he pours oil in wine. That's the water in the word. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the spirit in the word. Water in the wine. We told you over there in Titus, you, you'll find that in Titus. Uh, a, a perfect picture of the water and the oil in Titus chapter 3. Okay, and then he says, uh, and, and, and then he set him on his own animal. He set him on his own authority, gave him his own authority, brought him into the inn, the inn is the church, and, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took two dineros, or with two pennies, or two days' wages, and gave them to the innkeeper. Who's the keeper of the church? The Holy Spirit. He's the innkeeper. And then he told him, he says, in, he says, he said to him, take care of him. And whatever more you spend, when I come, I will repay. So he's telling them, I'm going to, I'm going to be gone for two days. If he was going to be gone for any other days, he would have gave him more money. But he said, I'm only going to be gone for two days. So if you have to spend more on him than these two days, whatever you spend, put it to my charge. I'll pay you when I return. Mm. So you say, well, maybe he's talking about he's going to be longer. No, he's not going to be longer. He's just telling them, whatever you have to do to take care of him while I'm away, mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. and I'll repay you. Yes. Uh, so that, that, that's what Jesus is telling the Holy Spirit. Whatever anointing you have to spend, whatever, whatever finances you have to give, whatever miraculous thing you have to do, do it and I'll repay you when I come. Thank so you. so that, that's what Jesus is telling him. Okay, we told you about that. We told you Exodus 19 and 20. I mean, I, Exodus 19 and 10. Uh, we told you that Moses, uh, we just giving you... Uh, 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 Information that the church world is for two days. For two days. And listen to what the Lord told Moses. He said, the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and, and consecrate them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their clothes and let them be ready for the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down from the mountain, Mount Sinai, in the sight of all the people. And he said to the people, be ready for the third day. Be ready for the third day. That's exactly what's going to happen. Israel is going to be without God or not dealing with God or, or dealing with Christ for two days. It, it's, it's clear in scripture. Mm -hmm. For two days, they're going to be without Jesus. Mm -hmm. For two days, God's not going to deal with them according to their treachery. For two days or for 2,000 years. All right. As we use this whole... Uh, uh, scenario uh, with Peter he says a thousand years is a day and a day is a thousand years. Please you have to go back on YouTube and, and look at the rest of them so that you can kind of catch up to what we're talking about. So he said a thousand years is a day and a day is a thousand years. So the, the church world is for two thousand years alright, two thousand years okay, and Hosea he said the same thing he said uh, six, uh, six and one he told him he says uh, come us, uh, return to the Lord for he has torn us and he will heal us he has stricken us and he will bind us up after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will rise us up that we may live in his sight he's telling you the same thing over and over and over two days you're going to be without him but on the third day he's telling Israel two days you're going to be without him but on the third day he's coming to get you two days he's going to be with us the church but on the third day he's coming to get you well, what is the third thing? We told you about Genesis. We told you that uh, from 
from seven days, uh, it represents uh, 7,000 years of human history or 7,000 years of uh, God created uh, uh, the world in six days and everything in it in six days. So the human history or a human lifespan on the earth is uh, um, uh, 6,000 years. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit later. We'll, we'll cover that uh, a little bit. All right. Now, we left off here uh, last week. Jesus. All right. Two days without Jesus. Now, look to. Now, remember when Jesus uh, died. Now, how many of you remember uh, the Last Supper? You know the Last Supper. You remember the Last Supper. You remember Jesus taking communion. He said, I, I have a fervent desire to take communion with you, right? Uh, you know, he, he took communion. After communion, he went into uh, the garden to pray. Get sick. He went into the garden to pray. After that, they came and they took him, and they took him in jail. They beat him all night. The next day, they marched him over there uh, to uh, um, uh, Pilate, and Pilate uh, uh, said, that I find no fault in him. And they marched him to Herod, right back to Pilate, and, okay, and then they ended up crucifying him. But, so, listen to this. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, talking about Jesus, when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. Now, this is, this is Passover. He says, according to the custom of the feast, when they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to be to, to supposing him to to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among the relatives, acquaintance, mm -hmm. and friends. So when they did this, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem. So if it was a day's journey out, it was a day's journey back. How right. I many days is that? Two, two. two days. They didn't find him until day three. Where did they find him? They found him in the temple. They found him in the church. Mary says to Jesus, why did you do this to us? And I said to them, hell, Mary, you lost the Lord. <laughs> but, you, you know, they say, hell, Mary, full of grace. And all of <laughs> Mary, you lost the Lord for two days. Look what Mary was doing. She was looking for the Lord. She was looking for the presence of the Lord in and around her own people. Mm -hmm. But he was not there. He was in the temple or the house of God, in the church. Mm -hmm. She says, why did you do this to us? She didn't say, why you do this to me? She said, why did you do this to us? Uh, he says to them, well, what was Jesus doing? He was, he was in the temple. He was amazing everybody. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he's doing now in the church. Amazing everybody. Yes. He's yes. amazing everybody. He's answering questions. He's asking questions. He, he's answering. And so, so he says, why did you do this to, us, to me? Did you not know? He, Jesus says to him, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Mm -hmm. Uh, but they did not understand the statement which he had spoke to them. They didn't get it. Mm. They didn't get it. You're going to be without the Lord for 2,000 years. Mm. 2,000 years. All right. To keep with that, 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 that terminology, let me uh, uh, go on to let you know two days. Now, th this is all through Scripture. And I'm just going by, I want to be biblically sound because the Bible says, out of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Let, let, let me show you something else. Uh, Numbers 32, 13. You just write it down because I don't have time for you to really, really go through it because i got to get through some more stuff. Uh, Numbers uh, 32 and th 13. It says, so the Lord... The Lord anger was aroused against Israel, and He made them wander in the wilderness for forty years. Mm. He want, made them wander in the world. Now, this is when the the, the whole the, they came back with the evil report, and they said we can't take lions like giants, and we like grasshoppers, and you know, and the evil report. And so they wandered in the wilderness for forty years until all the generations that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was dead, was gone. 
Okay, so now look at look for forty years. So I wonder. I said, God, what? Did, why forty years? And so he said, Well, man, God is sacred. So, so did the generation that did that evil in their sight. That that evil in sight could die. Yeah, well, that's true. But why forty years? So if you take it and, and you know and you use the, uh, the 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 jubilee concept with the hundred and twenty jubilee years. Uh, with the 1,520 jubilee years would give you 6,000. If you do 40, 50 jubilee years, or uh, if you put it this way, if you work 40 hours a day, uh, 40 hours a week, and you gave, you got paid $50 a day, uh, $50 an hour for 40 hours, how much money would you need? You have $2,000. Forty years, or 40, 50 jubilee years, is two thousand years, or two thousand, or two thousand years, or two days in the in the Peter concept. A thousand years a day, days a thousand years. So they was with they had to wander in the wilderness for two days in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because they couldn't go into the promised land for two two days or two thousand years. It'll be a 2,000 year period before they can go into the promised land. At the end of a, remember we're talking about the end of time. They couldn't go into the promised land until the 2,000 years had expired. Because you say, well, no, how do you get that? All right, let me explain this to you. Geographically, the location that they, they were at to go into the promised land, it would have only taken them 40 days. You still got the 40 no matter what. Mm -hmm. If they never sinned, they still would have took 40 days to get in there. It's still been the 40. It's still been two days. Anyway, you look at it. Okay, I'm going to go on. There, there's so many. I mean, Jesus in the wilderness, when he was in the wilderness for 40 days, he fasted for 40 days, representing Israel being without God for 40 days. You understand? Two days. It, 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 it shows itself over and over and over. Jericho, now this is a different scenario. Jericho, this is the 490 years. Remember the 490 years uh, back there in Daniel? Jericho showed you an example of the 490 years. They was going to march around Jericho. You know, they was marching around Jericho for seven times. You know, on the seventh day, they was going to march around seven times on that one day. That's 409, uh, 449 uh, or 490. It, it gives you a parallel. It's, it, it's, it's just a composite of what God is doing. I hope you understand. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm running out of time. Okay. This is another good one. Remember uh, uh, 2 Kings uh, chapter 5. This is Naaman. Remember Naaman went to the, uh, the prophet Elijah. Elijah. And he told him, go dip in the Jordan seven times. And on the seventh time, when you come up on the seventh time, your flesh will be made like new. Remember in, in, in the Bible, and on the seventh day, God said he brought all things back to completion. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a composite. It's just it's a composite. All right. Now, to what I want to talk about today. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, you turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. So we 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 done been all through the Bible. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go back. Uh, I'm just gonna quote the scripture back to you once again. He says Genesis chapter six verse three. It says, "And the Lord said, My spirit shall not all shall not strive with man forever." I'm gonna have, I know it. I can feel it in my spirit. I, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years. His days shall be. 120 years. His days shall be 120 years. Uh, what, 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 what? Moses, Noah, Noah, this is talking about Noah. Uh, okay, I want you to go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Now, his days, so that's a weird way. That's, we're just going to go over some things to show you that the, the span. Or, or the, 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 the man's, man's time or lease on the earth is for 6,000 years. Uh, 
Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, uh, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit it, is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what would a man gain in exchange for his soul? For the man, for the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his work. According, uh, uh, surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now, this is Jesus. He's talking to them. He's talking to them about the end times. And he's telling them, listen, take up your cross and follow me. Uh, this is, you got to do this. Don't, your life is worth more, it's more precious than any valuable good. He who saves his life will lose it. Who loses his life will save it. He's trying to tell you something here. He's trying to say, don't go after worldly goods. Be about your father's business. Go after the Lord. Because I'll explain in the end that he made this other statement. He made the statement in Jerusalem as well. I mean Jerusalem. In Revelation as well. But I, I'm going to show you. And when we talk about the end times, you'll find that same statement in there. Uh, but now, this is a strange thing. He says, some standing here will not mm -hmm. taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in the so that's kind of confusion. And no wonder the world don't understand when, when the Lord coming. He, he, he said, that, is anybody in that day still alive? No. Did the Lord come and we miss him? No. So what is he talking about? Mm. What, is, what is Jesus talking about? Did he have, did he have too much... Uh, 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 I just want to know, like, what, what, what? Was he out in the sun too long? He's walking too long, climbing up on mountains, all that stuff. What, what's going on, Jesus? What are you talking about? Uh, let's continue on chapter 17, chapter 17, verse 1. Now, now this is very important. Now, you got to listen. Look, look, look. God, I... Say this. Say, I will understand. I will, I will understand. understand. Okay. All right. Now, you out of your own mouth, you said. All right. Now, after six days, look at here. After six days. Now, now I do, before somebody, because hopefully you can go back and study on your own. But, uh, you know, there, I think in Luke, he says uh, it may around about, it may have been eight days or around eight days or so. I don't, well, Luke didn't really know but uh, Matthew and, and Mark, they knew exactly. They said after six days. Jesus just made this statement. He just made a statement that some of you won't, um, uh, won't taste death till you see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Well, he didn't mean that they will be here to see him. Then he was talking about vision for him. I'm going to prove it to you right now. He said after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up on the mountain. Peter, James, and John was with him when he was making that statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said that you, there's some standing here that will see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now look what he said. Look what happens. He said, and, and, and he says, he says, and Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up, up on a high mountain by themselves. Mm -hmm. And he was trans, transfigured before them his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah. What? <laughs> Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. You better believe it. If you wish, let us make here, three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Right? While he was he while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, 
This is my beloved son. Uh -huh. Hear him. Mm -hmm. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and was greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and do not be afraid. When they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Now, as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision. Look what he said. Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. Tell the vision to no one. What Jesus said, there's some standing here that will see in vision form. They will see the Son of Man coming in his glory. Well, what do you mean? See, that, that ain't him coming in his glory. Absolutely, that's him coming in his glory. Let me prove it to you. I know. Now, now, my mother, and my sister just reminded me this of yesterday, but my mother, when we was little, she used to read this book called Hansen and Gretel to us. Okay. You got to follow the promise. You got to follow the promise on us. You got to follow the promise because you got you to pay attention. You got to follow the promise. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to follow. Because what in the world is Moses doing there? Moses is dead. Right. What is Moses doing there? Yeah. yeah. Elijah's gone. What is what are they doing there? Come on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, no here. No here. Peter, second P Peter, Peter is talking to them. And now this is second Peter first. We're gonna we gonna get back. We're gonna follow the promise in a minute, but this is part of the promise. Second Peter first, uh second Peter chapter one, verse sixteen. He says this. He says, For we did not did not follow cunningly devised fables. You know, he said, we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to this. He's telling you this is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He says, but, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Mm -hmm. For we received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to us him from the excellence of glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. And we heard his voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Goodness gracious. He just, Peter just told you that this was Jesus coming. Did he just say, did y'all read it? Y'all not paying attention. Yeah. He said, he says, this is not, we're not doing, we're not, we're not, we didn't come up with any kind of cunning lies and fables and trickery. We, we're not doing any of that. We made known to you the power of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, this is Peter talking. Jesus already came, already died, so he's not talking about that. He's talking about Jesus coming again. So, let's follow the prompts. What in the world is Moses doing there? Why is Moses on this mountain? All right. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 5 and 8. Why is Moses on this mountain? Somebody please tell me. Why is Moses and Elijah on this mountain? Uh, I want to let you know the reason why. I'm going to let you know the reason why Moses is on this mountain. Pay attention closely. This is, gonna, this is a bombshell. Uh, the reason why Moses is on this mountain because Moses represents the righteous dead for 6,000 years old. Remember, Moses was 120 years old when he died. We're going to read it. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 5 and 8. Uh, 5 through 8. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord, and he and he buried him in a valley. It means the Lord buried Moses in the valley. Right. In the land of Moab, opposite Beth, Beth uh, Pear, uh, uh, but on the but on, but no one knew his grave to this day. Mm -hmm. Moses was one hundred and twenty years old. Moses was 120 years old. That's the same thing. My spirit will not always strive with man, but his day shall be 120 years. Right. His day shall be 120 years. Do you understand? 120 years? 50, 120 jubilees is 6,000 years. Moses represents the righteous dead for 6,000 years on planet Earth. What? <laughs> Say that again. Moses represents 120 50 jubilee years. Right. 
meaning 6,000 years of human history on planet Earth. Right. I'm gonna, just stay with me. You're going to okay. get this. Woo, woo. I, I, know, I know that's not saying I'm out of time. No. 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 Okay. Because no. okay. uh, <laughs> I, I can't see the time. No. Uh, so he says, he says, Moses, Moses was 120 <laughs> years old when he died. Right. Moses right. was 120 years old when he died. Yeah. Moses represents the righteous dead. Okay, let me, let me see this. Okay, let, let, I, I push up in here. Let me let me see. When Jesus come, right? Jesus come. Every, most Christians know that when Jesus come, he cracked the sky. Uh, the yes. dead in Christ shall rise. Uh -huh. Moses is representing them. Yes. Yeah. He's representing. This is a composite. This is a picture on a mountain of transfiguration. He's re he, he's representing the righteous dead. Right? Okay, wait. We're gonna we're gonna see. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna be amazed. I I I I'm, you're gonna be amazed. Re Moses represents the righteous dead. He died in the valley of Moab, right? He was buried, the Lord buried him. Nobody knows where he's buried. Nobody knows. He says, he says, look, he says, uh Moses was 103 years old. When he died, his eyes were neither dim nor his natural vigor diminished, and his children of the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Okay. Now, what? Now we dealt with Moses. Moses is there representing the righteous dead. Why is Elijah there? Mm -hmm. Elijah is there representing the righteous alive. Look, Elijah, Elijah, 2 Kings chapter 1. Checking, let's, let's follow the crumbs. Let's follow the crumbs. You gotta follow the crumbs because now Elijah, when Elijah was taken alive, Elijah was taken alive. He wasn't. He never died. Yes, come on. Moses died. Elijah didn't die. Both of them were with Jesus. You have Moses who's here, Elijah who's here, and the Lord is in the middle. Jesus said. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Yes. Yes. When I appear, you'll have the righteous dead and those that remain, you'll have yes. them too. Come on. You'll have them both with you. So look, look, now let's follow Ooh. the thumbs. Now let, let's see, let's see what, what really took place. Now what, what's going on here? What, let, let, let's see what's the Second Kings chapter 2, uh, verse 1. And it came to pass when, when the Lord was about to take Elijah into, into heaven by whirlwind, Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgad. Right. Uh, Elijah, and Eli, Elijah and Elisha stayed here. He said, said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. Follow the bread comes. Come All right. Come on. But Elijah said, as the Lord lives and as my soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophet who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you not know the Lord will take away your master from over you today? Yes. And he said, yes, I know it. Keep silent. Mm. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Follow the breadcrumbs. Come on. The Lord is sending him to Jericho. So, uh, he, says, he said, but he said, Elijah said, as the Lord lives and as my soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the son of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elijah and, and said to him, Do you not know that the Lord will take away your master from over your or over you today? He said, He answered, Yes, I know it. Keep silent. Mm. Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jordan. Good God, Lord. Lord. Jesus help me today. Uh, follow the breadcrumbs. Come on. But he said, as the Lord lives and as our soul lives, 
I will not leave you. So the two of them went on, and 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance. Mm -hmm. While the what is it? While the two of them stood by the Jordan, the Jordan River. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it divided this way and that. Mm -hmm. So that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Mm -hmm. And it was so. When they had crossed over, that, that Elijah said to, to, to Elisha, ask what what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Mm. Elisha says, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. Mm. He said, he said, you have asked a hard thing. Mm. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. Mm. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened. As they continued, say as they continued. As they continued. And they talked that suddenly a chair of fire appeared. Yes. With horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind mm -hmm. into heaven. Mm -hmm. And Eli Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, mm -hmm. the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So, so he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes, and he tore them into pieces. Mm -hmm. Right now, now you you, you follow me. Yeah. First, Elijah had to go to Bethel. The Lord sent him there. Then he went to Jericho. The Lord sent him there. Then he went to the Jordan over across the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. Right. Moses now. Go to Jude chapter 1. Jude, Jude is one, it's on one chapter. Go to Jude Church. 1 and 8. 1 and 8. Jude is 1 and 8. Yeah. Let me just drink something while you guys are turning. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, is what time is yeah, it? No, no, on. keep going. You're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jude 1 and 8, it says this, it says, Likewise also uh, these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil, evil of dignitary. That's why, uh, just thinking of here, here, that's why I said stop talking evil about dignitaries, mm -hmm. your president and everybody else. Don't, talk, don't do that no more. He said, Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dare not bring a, against him a rarely accusion, but said, the Lord rebuke you. What? Satan and Michael is having a dispute about Moses' body? Why? Moses is dead. Why would Satan care about Moses' body? Let that sing for just a second. Why would he care about Moses' body? Why is he disputing with Michael about it? No, you can't take his body. When, when did this happen? This happened the same time that Elijah was taken. Notice and I kept telling you to follow the breadcrumbs. Notice he went to Bethel, then to Jericho, and then to the Jordan. Notice where Moses left Joshua and the children of Israel. He couldn't cross over the Jordan. Right, yeah. He had to stay in the Valley of Moab. Right, right. He was buried in the Valley of Moab, which, yeah. is, right, which is right across from Jericho, mm -hmm. which is right across the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. So God took Elijah over where he buried Moses. Come on. And then sent the chariot to get Elijah and Moses to catch them up together to represent the rapture. It, what? They, they, Jesus. Moses died in the valley of Moab. Yes. God buried him there. Right. 
God then takes, years later, God takes Elijah over the Jordan River into the land of Moab. Right. And then sends Michael, the archangel, to get Elijah and, and Moses. Because yeah. Satan and Jew said, you can't have Moses. Come on. <laughs> God, the Lord. But he said, the Lord rebuke you. Good. Hey. Lord, the Lord hey. rebuke you, Satan. I don't. I'm not going to dispute with you. Yes. The Lord rebuke hey. you. It don't you know? And you find in Revelation, you find the scripture. It is the angel's job to carry out the rapture. Yes, God. Woo! Yes, it is. That's why Elijah. That's why Elijah said, "My God, my Father, my Father, the chariot and his horsemen." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, come on, come on, come it, on. He saw. He saw Michael grab Elijah uh -huh. in that whirlwind uh -huh. and took him to glory. But Elijah wasn't there alone. Moses' body was with them. Come on, and yes. they went up together. Come on. Why? Because that's showing you. And then Jesus over here on the Mount of Transfiguration shows you the righteous dead and, and the, the righteous, righteous living. Yes. Both together yeah. with Jesus on the mountain. On the mountain, which is in heaven. Remember, he said, a voice came out of heaven. Peter yes. said, a voice came out of heaven. Yes. You have the righteous dead yes. for 6,000 years. Right. Come on. The righteous dead is with the Lord. Right. And you have the righteous oh, living, which is Elijah. <laughs> Both of them are together yes. with the Lord. Because Jesus said, I am. Glory. At my appearance, yes. I am the resurrection. And I'm out of no! time. No! No, I, no, I, no, no, I no. I can't go any further. But every Wait. head bowed, every eye closed. Oh, come on. Father, oh. we thank you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We thank you that Jesus. you add uh, oh, revelation knowledge. Good. I bless you. I thank you. I give you glory. Good. I this praise you today in Jesus' holy and righteous name. <laughs> we thank you for all of your goodness and all of your mercy. Father, I will give them the invitation to receive Jesus Christ and be the Lord and the Savior. Because all of this that I'm only telling you is that you must be prepared. You must be ready when Jesus comes. You don't want to be, be, whether you're the righteous dead or the righteous living, you just must be righteous. And the only way to be righteous is, is, is a gift. And the only way to be righteous is to be born again and born from above uh, through Jesus Christ. He said you must, and you must, you must be born again. So if that's you, if you want to be born again, I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, dear God, dear I, God thank you I thank you for allowing me, for allowing me to receive your son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I, believe I believe that you raised him from the dead. You raised him from the dead. And, I believe and I believe that he's coming again. That he's coming again. Dear Father, dear Father, I confess him as my Lord. My and my Savior. And my Savior. I thank you now. I thank you now that I believe. That I believe. And therefore, and therefore, I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. And so, Father, and so Father, so Father, I thank you. I thank you for receiving me. For receiving me into your family. Into your family. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for you. If you made that prayer, type in the comments. I, I I'm born again, or I received Jesus. If you could, or you can go to our website, uh, overflowchristiancenter.org, overflowchristiancenter.org. Go down to the contact information and fill out your information, and somebody this week will be getting in contact with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, and then if you if you want to become a member of Overflow Christian Center, you can do that too. You can go to our website, uh, which is overflowchristiancenter.org, and uh, hit the contact uh, me information, or you can write in the contacts uh, right now and say, I would like to be a member of Overflow Christian Center. You are most welcome. I would love to be your pastor. So, Father, I thank you for those that are receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior and those that are becoming members right now of Old Flow Christian Center. And I thank you for sending those that do not have a church home into a place that they can, they can hear your word and grow their body. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, I love you guys. If you, or any of you have any questions, please get in contact with me. I am willing and able to answer all questions that you may have. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Woo!